So in order to begin this question, let's start off by drawing a little diagram so we understand what's occurring here. So right here, we have these wires hooked up to a battery, and these wires are connected to these parallel plates right here. Now, the positive terminal of the battery introduces positively charged particles onto this plate. Over here, the negative terminal of the battery introduces negatively charged particles on this plate. Now, because they are parallel to one another, and we're assuming these are large parallel plates, an electric field forms, and the electric field is pointing from positive down to negative, so the electric field is pointing downwards. Now, at the same time, Droplets of oil, which I have represented in blue right here, that the blue circle is an oil drop, an uh, oil droplet, is falling down in this space here. This is a container of sorts, if you can imagine. This is a closed system. So it's falling down. Now, the next thing to do is to establish a free body diagram. Now the free body diagram we have here, because the electric field is pointing downward, the force that this particle feels, and this particle is a negatively charged particle, is going to be pointing upwards because this positively, excuse me, negatively charged particle wants to go to the positive end here. Another way to remember is if you have a negative particle, it, the force is opposite the direction of the electric field. Since the electric field is pointing down, the, the electric force, you could say, is pointing up. Now that we have our free body diagram drawn, we know that the force is acting on this particle is gravity and this electric force. The next thing we need to do is apply Newton's second law. But before we can do that, let's establish what these forces are equal to, the equations for these forces. So this electric force, we know that the electric field is equal to a force per charge. Now we can rearrange this equation to isolate this force right here. So we get that the force is equal to the electric field times the charge. Now here, the force of gravity, we know it to be mass times gravity, but we have to keep in mind that this particle is falling through a fluid, and that fluid, which I'm drawing with these tiny red markings, is the air molecules, and air, is indeed a fluid, a very, it is a fluid. And because of that, we're not going to use the mass. What we're going to do instead is use the density times the volume, because these two are equivalent to the mass. And this weird looking P shape right here is called rho. This is the symbol rho. So rho times the volume times gravity. So let us set up the Newton's second law. So we're going to sum all the forces in the y direction. So if we sum up all the forces in the y direction, we get that the electric force minus the force of gravity is equal to zero. Let me be a little more specific on that because we know that F is equal to MA or the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration, acceleration in the Y direction. Now, the reason it's zero is because this is suspended in midair. It's, in essence, it's just still, it's floating in midair if you want to think about it. It's in a equilibrium state so it's neither going up and it's not going down. It's just staying still. So 
let's continue on. So we said this electric force is equivalent to the electric field times the charge minus, and what we have here is the density times the volume. Now the volume of this droplet, a droplet in this case is a sphere. So I'm going to bracket this. The volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cube and the grav and gravity right there all set equal to zero now we set these forces equal to each other and now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate r so when we plug in the numbers for r we take the electric field, which is right here, and we take the charge of the particle, right here, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and we divide it by 4 times the density, which is 858 kilograms per meters cubed, and we multiply by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Solving for R, we get the cube root of 3 times the electric field times the charge divided by 4 pi times the density times gravity. So when we plug in the numbers, we get that r is equal to the cube root of 3 times 3 times 10 to the 4th times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, all divided by 4 times, we'll use 3.14, times 858 times 9.8. So this here is the electric field. This is the charge of the particle. This is the density. And this is the acceleration due to gravity. Ultimately, we would get a radius of 5.15 times 10 to the minus 7th meters.